join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. The first time the young scientist realized that discovery did not always belong to its discoverer, he was still learning the language of secrecy. Chalk dust hung in the air of government classrooms. Equations erased as quickly as they were written, and the most important results were never spoken aloud outside guarded rooms. For many black American scientists of the 20th century, brilliance was not enough to guarantee ownership of one's work. In an era shaped by war, racial exclusion, and an expanding national security state, even extraordinary breakthroughs could vanish behind stamp files and anonymous labels. What followed was a quiet historical paradox. Ideas that reshaped modern life, credited to institutions rather than individuals, their human authors obscured by classification and bureaucracy. Few stories illustrate this better than that of J. Ernest Wilkins, Jr., a prodigy of physics and mathematics whose most consequential contributions were absorbed into the category of government work, leaving his name largely absent from the popular record of scientific achievement. Wilkins was born in 1923 in Chicago into a family that treated education not as aspiration but as expectation. His father, J. Ernest Wilkins Sr., was himself a mathematician and civil rights advocate, and the household was steeped in academic discipline. The son's intellectual gifts appeared almost immediately. By the age of 13, he had completed high school, and at 16, he earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the University of Chicago. At 19, he completed his doctorate in nuclear physics, making him one of the youngest PhDs in the nation's history. His early promise unfolded during a time when the United States urgently needed scientific talent, yet still systematically excluded black Americans from full participation in academic and industrial research. The Second World War created a contradiction that would shape Wilkins's career. On one hand, the federal government mobilized unprecedented resources to solve scientific problems related to warfare, energy, and defense. On the other hand, segregation and discrimination remained entrenched. Black scientists were often barred from faculty positions, private laboratories, and corporate research divisions. Government service, paradoxically, became one of the few spaces where their expertise could be employed at the highest level, not because prejudice had disappeared, but because national survival demanded competence above all else. It was in this context that Wilkins was recruited into the Manhattan Project, the vast and secretive effort to develop the atomic bomb. The project drew together some of the greatest scientific minds of the era, operating under extreme secrecy. Wilkins worked at the Metallurgical Laboratory in Chicago, contributing to nuclear reactor physics and radiation shielding. His work addressed a problem of life and death importance, how to protect human beings from lethal radiation while enabling sustained nuclear reactions. These calculations were not theoretical exercises. They directly informed the design of reactors and later nuclear facilities, shaping both military and civilian nuclear technology. Yet almost none of this work could be publicly attributed to him. Every document he touched was classified. Every report was filed under institutional authorship. The Manhattan Project operated on the principle that no single scientist owned an idea. Discoveries belonged to the government. For Wilkins, this meant that his intellectual labor disappeared into a vast archive marked secret, restricted, or confidential. When the war ended and the atomic age dawned, many of the scientists involved became famous. Some names entered textbooks and popular histories. Others, particularly black scientists whose careers had already been constrained by racism, faded into obscurity. The reclassification of Wilkins's breakthrough work as government work was not merely a matter of security protocol. It intersected with structural inequalities that determined who would later receive credit. After the war, many white scientists returned to prestigious university positions where they could publish, teach, and build reputations based on declassified aspects of their research. Wilkins, despite his credentials, struggled to find academic appointments commensurate with his expertise. Segregation limited where he could teach, and private industry often excluded black scientists altogether. Government classification played a decisive role in this imbalance. 
When research is classified, it cannot be cited, published, or discussed openly. Scientific reputation, however, is built on precisely those activities. Papers generate recognition, citations establish authority, and public discourse cements legacy. By labeling Wilkins's contributions as government property, the state effectively removed them from the economy of academic prestige. His ideas advanced nuclear science, but his name did not advance with them. The phrase government work carried a specific legal meaning. Under U.S. law, work produced by federal employees in the course of their duties is not subject to individual copyright. In the context of classified research, this meant that the state retained complete control over dissemination and attribution. While this applied to all scientists involved in classified projects, its consequences were uneven. Those with independent platforms and institutional backing could recover visibility once declassification occurred. Those already marginalized found it far harder to reclaim authorship. Wilkins's experience also reflects a deeper historical pattern in which black intellectual labor was absorbed into collective or institutional frameworks without acknowledgement. From enslaved artisans whose innovations were claimed by their owners to 20th century inventors whose patents were ignored or challenged, black Americans repeatedly saw their creativity detached from their names. In Wilkins's case, the mechanism was modern and bureaucratic rather than overtly violent, but the effect was similar. His scientific identity was partially erased. Despite these obstacles, Wilkins continued to contribute to science throughout his life. He worked at Argonne National Laboratory, focusing on reactor physics and energy systems, and later held academic positions at institutions including Howard University. His research extended into applied mathematics and energy policy, fields that remain deeply connected to national infrastructure and security. Yet even as he accumulated decades of experience, much of his most impactful early work remained locked behind classification barriers or attributed to laboratories rather than individuals. The reclassification of his breakthrough as government work also shaped how history would remember the development of nuclear science. Popular narratives often emphasize a small group of iconic figures, reinforcing the idea that innovation emerges from isolated geniuses. In reality, projects like the Manhattan Project were collaborative on a scale previously unimaginable. Classification encouraged this anonymity, but social hierarchies determined whose anonymity became permanent. When later histories were written, the absence of published papers by scientists like Wilkins made it easier to overlook them. It is important to understand that classification was not merely a temporary inconvenience. For decades, many documents remained inaccessible. By the time portions were declassified, the scientific conversation had moved on and credit had already been assigned elsewhere. Younger scholars learned the field through textbooks that reflected these gaps. The silence around black contributors became self-reinforcing, mistaken for absence rather than omission. The Cold War intensified these dynamics. Scientific research increasingly overlapped with military objectives, expanding the scope of classified work. Wilkins and his peers found themselves in a system where the most consequential problems were also the least visible. For black scientists, this created a cruel irony. The more important the work, the less likely it was to enhance their professional standing. Racial politics compounded the issue. Even when declassification occurred, institutional racism influenced who was invited to conferences, who received awards, and whose stories were told. Wilkins did not benefit from the same networks of influence that elevated some of his colleagues. Recognition arrived late, if at all. Honors such as election to the National Academy of Engineering came decades after his initial contributions, long after public narratives had solidified. The label of government work thus functioned as both a legal designation and a historical eraser. It obscured individual authorship under the guise of collective effort and national security. While necessary in certain contexts, it disproportionately harmed those already marginalized. Wilkins's case demonstrates how neutral-sounding bureaucratic categories can have unequal consequences, shaping whose genius is remembered and whose is forgotten. In recent years, historians have begun to reassess these hidden contributions. 
Archival research, oral histories, and renewed attention to diversity in science have brought figures like Wilkins back into view. This reevaluation does not diminish the importance of security or collective effort, but it challenges the assumption that anonymity was evenly distributed. It asks who paid the price for secrecy and who later benefited from its selective lifting. Understanding why Wilkins's breakthrough was reclassified as government work requires acknowledging both the wartime context and the racial realities of 20th century America. The government needed his mind, but it did not offer him ownership. His calculations helped make nuclear technology safer and more effective, influencing reactors that powered cities and weapons that reshaped geopolitics. Yet the official record treated these insights as faceless outputs of the state. The story is not solely about loss. It is also about resilience. Wilkins persisted in science despite barriers that might have deterred others. He mentored students, published where he could, and remained committed to public service. His life challenges the notion that recognition is the ultimate measure of impact. Still, historical justice demands more than quiet perseverance. It requires naming those whose work was hidden and understanding the systems that hid them. Today, as debates continue about classified research, intellectual property, and equity in science, Wilkins's experience remains deeply relevant. It reminds us that secrecy, while sometimes necessary, must be examined alongside power. When breakthroughs are labeled government work, we must ask whose names are being protected and whose are being erased. Only by confronting this history can we ensure that future generations inherit a scientific record that reflects not only what was discovered, but who discovered it. In reclaiming the story of J. Ernest Wilkins, Jr., we do more than honor an individual. We expose a pattern in which black American scientists made foundational contributions under conditions that denied them visibility. Their breakthroughs power the modern world, even as their names were filed away. The challenge now is to bring those names back into the light, not as footnotes, but as integral authors of the scientific age.